Viewers! Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Free Space Blue Planet. Well, I gotten a few replies looking through the tech room, so we're gonna do that now. Just build the new stuff they put in. Which is a lot. I actually already did this, but I made a terrible, terrible mistake, viewers. You see, I actually spoke every single line of the... Not the mission simulator, go away. Of the intelligence here, like all these extra bits, the hammer, like the ancients, the rift, every single thing here. I actually spoke out loud. And viewers, I am no Morgan Freeman, so it was awful. Also, I think my mic was a little bit off, so the audio was pretty terrible. Now, if you guys want me to upload it for the sake of the humor, I absolutely will. But otherwise, that's going to just go on my backup hard drive, never to be spoken of again. As it is, I'm going to roll through here and give you time to pause and read the text down here about all the new ships and the information bits, and give my final thoughts on Blue Planet. Well, it's a great mod. I can't even say mod, it's a user-made campaign, I guess, because you're not really changing everything. You're just putting new stuff in. But, I mean, the fact it's fully voiced, and voiced fairly well, really means a lot to the depth of the game, and that's also one of the main reasons I decided to LP it. Now, there is a sequel called War in Heaven Part 1. Um, the whole thing with Age of Aquarius is meant to be a trilogy, as I understand it. And I'm thinking about Let's Playing it, but the problem is there's no voice acting yet. They're still in the process of gathering VAs, and then they, of course, they have to record all the dialogue, and then they have to program it into the missions, update everything. So there's a lot of work involved there. Now, if you guys still want to see it, I will be happy to play through it blind again. Um, the problem is there will be a lot of dead space that I'm so-so at filling, as you've noticed. Especially in the missions here, when they're a lot more intense in terms of combat, and I really have to focus what I'm doing or fail. I mean, hell, I fail even when I am focused on what I'm doing, so... yeah. So we're on to the new cruisers. And all those ships here that I just went through, the fighters, like the uh, Comanche, these are the Kitbast ships off the Sanctuary. If you haven't paused it to read it through. But this is just giving, giving everyone the opportunity who doesn't have free space and isn't going to install them on a chance to read about the ships we saw and defended, and in some cases failed to defend. But getting back to the mod, I really like the voice acting. Um, some of the way it was recorded was a little inconsistent. For example, how Taylor sounded. A little bit choppier, a little bit more tinny than how Corey sounded. But again, that's something you can forgive in what is basically a labor of love. These guys made no money from this. They reskinned all these ships, they recorded all that dialogue, they tested all the missions, and as I understand it, being that this is sort of the director's cut, some of those missions were even rebalanced. And over nothing. Just to, you know, give this to the... They had a story they wanted to tell, and they told it. Well, they told part one of it, I guess. And everyone was very impressed. Um, I thought the fights were very epic in scale in a lot of missions, especially towards the end. I guess they built you up to it. Um, some of the red alert stuff made it actually a little bit difficult to record. I've gone back, and for example, the very first mission of the mod... Um, a Vast Planet with Blue Seas is actually two missions, uh, in terms of how it's launched. It starts with a Vast Planet, and then you do the Red Alert warp to continue the mission, and it ends with with Vast Seas. Blue Planet with Vast Seas, sorry. So, other than that, uh, I thought the structure was pretty good. There was a lot of storyline, of course, and some missions not a lot happened, but, uh, the Dante. But I enjoyed it. And I would hardly recommend it to anyone who has free space, too. Uh, the mod is very easy to install. I had to change a couple lines of text in the notepad file. The INI files just open them up in notepad. And that way you got the, the media VPs, the higher resolution textures in there. Come on, there you go. I thought the new ships 
the Vishnu ships, the primaries were a little bit tricky to get the handle on, but you really felt powerful when you were playing as them. It really gave you that sense of um, technological superiority they talk about in a lot of the, the tech blurbs here. Especially when you have like 10 gun mounts. And we're just watching them tear apart Shiman cruisers and fighters and bombers and like two or three volleys. It's pretty impressive. One thing I found out though once we finish moving through the strike craft and bombers here, is that these guys, they actually have beam cannons, and they were available to play in one mission, but I guess they were pulled out. I'm kind of sad about that. I never got to really experience it. I don't know if you got to use the beam cannons on it or if you just had to use the primaries or not, but... And there we have the first ship from the UEF, the Karuna, which I guess doesn't use beam weaponry, I noticed. Very general purpose destroyer. But that's all of the new ships. Now the weaponry is a little bit different. Basically they went back and they actually renamed a lot of the weaponry on capital ships from Free Space 2. Yeah, because the Baylor still has that Subak HL7 bit there, but yeah, this gun is apparently pretty amazing. And I used it, I liked it. Uh, the Vishnu Primary. Of course talks about how what it does is impossible, according to what we understand science to be. I'm going to talk about the Terran turrets, the Hound Tooth, the Blob turrets. Catbird? I don't know about that. That one's new on me. Actually, I don't, yeah, there's a lot of these. Wee! Still sleeping weaponry. I'm just going to roll on through here, give a couple seconds to pause and read if you're interested. But again, this just shows the level of detail these guys went to when they were constructing this mod. I'm sure some of this is actually from Free Space 2 or Free Space 1. I haven't gone back to recheck it. I know, I know, that's a lack of research on my part, but hey, I'm in this for fun. Ah yes, the Shivan Super Laser. Destroyed Pursuit of Prime. Uh, my only gripe about this, again, is I guess that big long speech about life after death, uh, karma. Now, I understand why they put it in now, having beaten the whole mod, because, um, and also having read the technical database, the actual intelligence bits, because the UEF is apparently very pacifistic, which sort of, I guess, fits in with reincarnation and the religious beliefs. Uh, the Ubuntu party that runs it is not nearly, not nearly as militaristic as the GTVA, at least the Terran side of the GTVA. And so that sort of, sort of explains why they put it in there. For me, though, it still really breaks up the pacing and the, the overall presentation. Like, if it had just gone in as an intelligence briefing, like right in here, I thought that would have fit a little bit better. It doesn't really apply to what happens to Bay because he doesn't sort of have the dark than the light bit unless you're going to go all epileptic trees and figure, oh, he's actually dead and this is all a dream, which I'm pretty sure it's not, given the ending. The overloaded Crypt Hammer, which is what the Colossus used to fire on the Sathanas. Just I like some of the names, like Crypt Hammer, Pave Warden, Forge Eagle, especially when you get down to the new beam types. out of stuff to say very early in this. <laughs> but yeah, I guess get back to me, viewers, on whether or not you want me to do War in Heaven, even without the voice acting. It's probably... I'm probably not going to read every single line because, as I mentioned, that didn't work so well when I was just trying to read the intelligence briefings. I like how all the humans have their these amazing names like Forge Eagle, Forge Dove, Crypt Hammer. And students are like, 121B two, one, beam, 255A beam, 1A3 beam. I noticed, I'm not sure if any of the new Terran ships mount flak. Then again, they weren't shooting at me, so. I'm only saying that because I saw the Crow Lash flak system down here. And Super Houndtooth, because making it super means it's much better. 
like this curl ash is used on most GTDA warships. Hmm. Performance poorly against shields. Well, you know, stopping those missiles made a big difference. Even then, the Orestes was at, what, 10%? Of course, the Shivans were firing a lot of disabling missiles, a lot of anti-subsystem weaponry. The Hellstar Pulse Cannon. And those were the blue, the small blue shots that all the capital ships were firing, and yeah, they toasted most of the Shivan ships that were up against them. Here we get to the new beams, aka the Blue Ray of Light Show. Frost Tactical Beam. Oops. The Winter King Heavy Beam. What do you think the Raynor mounts? I think. Uh, it doesn't say specifics. The Ice Queen, which the Titan mounts three of them in its frontal arc. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> the Aurora Wake. Mid range. Thorn Lance. Kind of, I guess they ran out of wintery things to call it. And the Vision Beam weapons. So they can't scale up as well as the Sheevan ones now. All these missiles were already used, so we skipped down to Vision Missile. They fire harpoons! And essentially they're basically just twice as good as what we have, which is pretty straightforward. Vision Bomb, twice as good. Vision Ultra Bomb. Yeah, this one's actually neat. This one I've read, and essentially what happens is you tag an enemy ship with it, and then they transport the bomb to the inside of the ship, which I think was used in Stargate Atlantis, which I actually haven't seen that many episodes of, so that's a whole other bag of commentary, and I'm not going to get into it. Fusion Motor is from one. Sheevan Cluster mission. Missile is from... No, Fusion might be from two. Sheevan Cluster Missile is from two. Fighter Killer... And the EOS torpedo is, yeah, nuclear missiles carried by the Raynor class destroyers. And the supernova torpedo is carried by the Titans, and they actually use that mostly to smash up a Ravana class destroyer that was chasing them. On the intelligence. Now, these were the bits I actually read completely out loud. And as you can see, it's a lot of text. So, most of the stuff is fairly short here, although it does give kind of an interesting walking animation into the students. Oh, so much text. All right, let's scroll up. To, let's just start at the beginning here. She was in the Great War. So we can read down there to about conversely. Feel free to pause it and give it a whirl. And I'll zip down here, and you can finish off the other bits. And basically telling us that we have no idea why they do what they do, or even where they come from. The second incursion, of course, was the Free Space Two War. The Second Great War, I guess they called it. Bold defensive strategy. No kidding. There we go. I like that line. Broken, bleeding, and discouraged. Suddenly terrified at the vast and impenetrable emptiness and things waiting in its shadows, mankind turned his attention towards returning to its birthplace. Post Capella. So unfortunately, the GTVA isn't doing so well, which you'll be able to see if you read through here. I'll zip that down again. I'll actually have to zip down a little bit further still. Oh, that's a lot of text. That's a lot, lot of text. Well, let's show some of the ships here. That's kind of neat. Going down through the list. Fighter class. How the government's broken down again. This shows, I mean, the Blue Planet guys did this at Labor Out of Love, but they had a pretty good back history to work with, considering it's just a shooter. Or a space shooter, rather. So, again, feel free to raise, read down to, I guess, radio signals down here. The Earth. Oh my god, I wish they had actually just broken it up into two parts. It'd be much easier to scroll through. We have a third part here, and down we go. Not one line. Yay. Admiral Akenbosch. 
was, in theory, I guess, the main villain of Free Space 2. Although the Sheevans are still bad because, hey, they blew up a star. So really, it's all about scale. Let's go down here. And this part here is important. As a young pilot during the GTI Hades Rebellion, as I mentioned during Free Space 2, if you watched that, a lot of fan theory centers around Atkin Bosch actually being the player, player character in Silent Threat. And I'll go down again. There we go. Students! A walking animation there. And read down to Soon Homeworld. Down we go. Oh, again, just a little bit too far for one screen. Try again. Oh my god, yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, so this here all applies to the mod. Everything here applies to the mod. Which means I didn't actually, yeah, I started at about the rift. Ah, here we go, Hammer of Light. This is nice and easy. You can just pause, read this through, and we'll move right along here. Shivans. 50 years after the Great War, 18 years after the Second Incursion, we still know almost nothing about them. They look creepy as hell. And down. Xenocidal. No kidding. lines. Oh, wow. There's a lot here, viewers. Let's see how much more is down here. Let's give a chance to read this through. Again, feel free to pause and go through it. Wow. I mean, we don't know a lot about them, but that's a lot of text. We're not even halfway through, viewers. You see why reading this out loud was a terrible idea for me? The Ancients species that was last wiped out by the Shivans before us, as far as I understand it. And they gave us the technology, well, it's techno yeah, the technology to follow the Lucifer and take it out, uh, finding out that shields didn't work in subspace. There you go, that should be enough space there. Subspace itself. Science, viewers. Science. Ugh, so much text. Again, labor of love, tons of information, but wow, a lot of writing. A lot of reading. So this talks about the rift between the Sudans and Terrans. It developed as a result of the Tapellan star getting going Nova. There's been plenty of time to read that, so... There's some way I could actually bring this up here, or maybe into this screen, a little bit easier. Anyhow, pausing, reading, moving on. Yeah, I read this all in one sitting. It took like an hour. What was I thinking, viewers? What was I thinking? And this is still probably going to be at least 20 minutes. And all I'm doing is talking about the mod and how I scroll through text while you read it. Hey, did it in two. There you go. That's broken up a little bit better now. But I'm not sure if you can find transcripts of this online. If you can, I'd probably much easier than this. And I encourage you to read it if you're a fan of the continuity, because it really does explain a lot and sort of sets the stage for the world of Free Space Blue Planet leading up to the actual missions I played. And pause that, read through it, and down we go. There you go. That wasn't bad at all. And it also kind of sets up the interim period with the ones down here called the Balance of Power. Between this one and More in Heaven. Part 2. Read, 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 and scroll, 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 scroll. So these are broken up a little bit better. Maybe these were actually original. Because these you can mostly do with one trip down through the scrolling.
Project Nagari. I might just go silent here, viewers, because I'm starting to lose my voice, as you can tell. Sorry, this isn't very interesting. But you can listen to the awesome music. Should have some kind of counter and just edit it on screen like five, four, three, two, one. Next. And this talks about how people are actually sensitive to how the Shiva editions communicate. No! Three windows, curses. And down again. Oh god, four windows. But I guess there's a lot of spacing in this one. About the prophecy that the jester had. And here we go. Wow, yeah, that was a lot. Alright, so... Give that a read, and on we go. Vishnin's in the 14th battle group. Samuel Bay's battle group. Well, not his battle group, but the battle group he was a part of. Pause, read, and scroll. Grr. Then again, they probably didn't expect anyone to actually do this when they designed the mod. Hey, I bet some guy's gonna let's play through this and actually film and scroll down through every single intelligence thing we wrote. Pfft, no, that's insane. Who would do that? And who would want to watch it? Valid questions, viewers. Valid questions. Or rather, valid questions, designers of Blue Planet. And on to the next one here. Ooh, that's a big paragraph. After the opening of... So, read through. And here we go. Again, more. Oh well. Only seven more to go, viewers. <laughs> you know, if no one wants to sit through this, I will upload the ones where I talk about it, but it just sounds really embarrassing. And I read it kind of quickly. Again, I know Morgan Freeman. Reunion! Yeah, so all those, like, what the heck? Why would you do this things that were going on? The Admiral actually really botched the first contact here. And here we go, scrolling down. And again, read through. Pause it up. Unpause. Here we go. I have to go full screen to actually read this. I'm at 1200 resolution right now, so hopefully it's okay. If not, I guess I really will have to put up the bits where I talk endlessly for an hour. On the reunion part two. Man, even this is kind of long, isn't it? Whew. So these bits here sort of start to go into the interplay of how the UEF and the GTBA fought it out to start with. And yeah, scrolling down. Ugh. I can't believe I actually read all this. Mind boggling. Endlessly mind boggling. Alright. Further down now. Okay. Bottom bits, viewers. We're almost done here. If you're still watching. If anyone's still watching. Now you find out that basically one-on-one, -on -one, the UEF fighter craft are superior to the GTBA fighter craft. At least in terms of firepower. Scrolling down. Hey, didn't too. Awesome. Of course, they had to break it up into five parts, so that would have been a bit much for one screen. And 
pause, read through. Here we go. And again, if you can find this online, as I said before, I advise you to do that instead, obviously. And we're going to scroll down here in a second. Here we go. Just because it's probably a lot easier than reading it in this tiny, tiny box down here. If I was any good with video editing software, I'd actually like zoom in on that, but I'm not, so I won't. Unless, of course, I find out some really easy way to do it post-production, in which case I'm going to sound very silly. And here we go. Three left! Three left, viewers! Pause, read. Balance of Power, part three. We're going to move through these last ones a little bit faster because I have nothing to say and I feel bored. So there you go. And it takes zero, very little time to pause that and read it, so on to part four. They have a president. Text, 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 pause. And scroll. That was a short one. Of course, it's a short one, that means you can pause it and read it even faster, and I can go on to number five. Like this. And pause. Sounds like I'm conducting exercise classes, what the heck? And here we go. I'm gonna stop at the, um, the GTBA's demands of the UEF. Oh god, this is the long one. I guess it's the capper, so. I also mispronounce a bunch of words and names when I'm doing this out loud, so. This is much less embarrassing, believe it or not. And down we go again. Okay, there's like three lines left. Okay, well, that's it. That's most. Of the, actually, that's all the new stuff in the technical database. There's actually any cutscenes in this. Yeah, these are all the ones from Free Space. And the credits. Now this I am definitely going to let play for at least a little bit. Because, again, a lot of effort went into this. And you're probably not going to want to watch the credits. But the ship design was cool. The missions were cool. There were a couple little boring parts, but... I do encourage you to take close looks at those web support links there, hardlight.net, scp.indiegames.us, and fs2source.warpcore.org. So a lot of this fantastic stuff was designed and hosted. And yes, thank you Volition for making Free Space 2. As you can see, for a game that's kind of old, some new technology went into there. These are the guys who actually did Blue Planet, Age of Aquarius. I guess they borrowed quite a few, uh, they borrowed a couple of songs. Uh, Planet Killers, Homo 2, OST, oh, there's a game I never finished. Wow, that, ooh, flashbacks, okay. <laughs> Fish and beam sounds. And as you can see, they didn't design all of the models. I don't believe a lot of them were borrowed and reskinned, but again, that just shows you what an amazing community this is. They just let me like, here, take these models. Ah, that's some good music. And all the voice actors. I want to see who did Admiral Carey. Also starring oh, the demos of the oh, the demons of the past briefing captain. Good dudes. Unknown entity slash entities as Shiva, unknown entity slash entities as Vishnu. I like it. And there's the whole battle group warping in there.
The story of the Earth's GTV war will be told in Blue Planet, War in Heaven. Well, viewers, that brings me to the end of this Let's Play. And... Yeah, let me know if you guys want me to actually do War in Heaven. There's no voice acting, so it'll be a lot of me blathering on. Or let me know if you want me to post those terrible, terrible videos where I speak everything out loud. Just because I have really no ego effectively, so I'd be happy to embarrass myself if it's entertaining. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next Let's Play.